Listen, children, and listen well to the king's horses and men when Humpty Dumpty fell. Now, this is a classic. You know the story with its hidden meanings to be quite allegory. Has Humpty Dumpty done anything but fall? No, he embraces failure as a lesson to us all. That is the reason he's had such a quarrel. He's a fairy tale to teach us a moral. Now, who am I to be telling this tale? Well, my name is Jack, like the beanstalking male. I may not be jumping a candlestick, but I am the one to break the rhyme scheme. Hi. <laughs> I would like to pose you a question. When's the last time you read a fairy tale and ended with the thought, hmm, I feel enlightened. Don't answer that, it's rhetorical. I mean, aren't they supposed to teach you things? Does the ugly duckling really teach you not to hate ugly people? No! If that were true, I wouldn't get made fun of for being a ginger all the time. <laughs> I know exactly what you're thinking. Jack, if you're so good with fairy tales, then why don't you make the perfect one then? And that's not a bad idea. Sorry for giving you an annoying voice. I need to make the perfect fairy tale. No, I need to make the perfect story. And that's what I'm doing today. And you all are coming with me. Now, where do we start? What do you need in the perfect story? Well, I'll answer your question if you listen here. The necessities of our story will magically appear. From humble beginnings, seamstress or janitor, our story needs an intuitive character. From the old woman's shoe to the bricks of dreary lane, we need to make sure that our plot isn't plain. And to end off our story and finish the chapter, we all know you need a happily ever after. Now, let us backtrack and begin at the beginning with characters singing and grinning and winning, like Hansel and Gretel or Mary's Little Lamb, the itsy bitsy spider, Alice in Wonderland. Our perfect story of what should it consist but a main character or a main protagonist? Fun fact, the Jack in all those fairy tales, exact same guy. The man eats pies, jumps over candlesticks, climbs beanstalks. He even writes entertainment speeches. <laughs> Jack Horner, unfortunate name. Now, obviously, the main character of our story just has to be named Jack. That's just a given. With the Jack of all trades that he is, this story could really be about anything. He could be slaying a dragon and saving a princess. Wait, that's Mario Brothers. <laughs> he could be like a crazy race car driver where everyone's on shrooms. That's Mario again. <laughs> he needs a humble job, right? So what if he's like a plumber from Italy? Mamma Mia, we found our protagonist. Now, we need a love interest of the story because I'm lonely. <clears throat> the main character's lonely. <laughs> and his name was... Judge. <laughs> That's a silly name. That's your name, isn't it? Well, I guess this is the perfect love interest after all. <laughs> Although characters in love are an interesting thought, those things don't matter without a good plot. You ever read Grimm's fairy tales? Don't answer that, it's rhetorical. I mean, <laughs> some pretty crazy stuff goes down. Some real serious blood and guts. Okay, <laughs> who here has read the original Snow White. The original. Please answer that one. That one's not rhetorical. At the end, spoiler alert, the evil queen has to dance wearing burning shoes until she dies. <laughs> that actually happens. This sort of crazy stuff happens in stories you haven't even heard of. Like the wolf and the seven little kids. The wolf dies in the end. The thief and his master. <laughs> Yeah, everybody dies in the end. <laughs> the ungrateful son. Hmm. Well, he turns into a toad for some reason. I don't know. He's ungrateful. This is important to bring into our perfect story. Turns into a toad. Now, it's time for some audience participation. Riddle me this. How does main character Jack woo this tall glass of water sitting before <laughs> I heard public jacuzzi. <laughs> but our favorite stories didn't end well, for they were all a disaster. All because they ended with 
a happily ever after. Here's my outlandish opinion of the day. The happily ever after is the laziest cop out in all of literature. I mean, you don't want to make a creative ending for your story? Just slap on these seven words and you're done. You don't even need to try. You know, on second thought, the reader's already checked out at that point. Why do you even need to attempt to make it good? <laughs> like, I didn't get to the end of Little Red Riding Hood because I fell asleep. You think they're gonna make it to the end of this beautiful masterpiece? No, of course not. Happily Ever Afters are horribly irrelevant, only to be used by the least of intelligence. Although only used with the least of care, you might as well just toss it in there. I mean, come on, I'm lazy. So, <laughs> we know what we need in our perfect story. Let's do a little recap, some checklist action. So, main character, got main character Jack. That's an easy check, baby. Love interest. <laughs> <laughs> villain. Oh crap, we forgot about the villain. Okay, you, Kaylee, you're in the story now. That's showbiz, baby. Uh, uh, well, he turns into a toad. Also, public jacuzzi. Thanks for that one, imaginary friend. Uh, happily ever after. As we discussed, not that difficult to just chuck on in there. So, without further ado, I present to you the perfect story. Once upon a time, far, far away, our hero, Jack the Plumber, was plumbing like a plumber. Wow, I'm so sad and lonely being a plumber and all, he thought. Just then, Judge came into his life. Fifty. While in a public jacuzzi, a villain arrived. You can't have him, said Kaylee Mouk, sitting in the back right there. He's mine. <laughs> judge and the audience member fought. Blood and guts. <laughs> Just as Judge held up the severed head of Kaylee Mouk, Jack turned into a toad. Excuse me. <laughs> and they all lived happily ever after. And the moral of the story is... What's the moral of this story? And why was it so bad? <laughs> I mean, I, I did everything right. It should have been perfect. Like, I had characters, I had a plot, I had a happily ever after, I had a... I forgot a moral. <laughs> That's why the original stories are good. Their plots weren't, but... It's the moral that's memorable. And I forgot it. I guess I should just stop checking the boxes and writing for glory. I think I just found the moral to my story. <laughs>